It is needed in order to ensure availability of critical infrastructure, acting critical infrastructure that will allow us to get water during winter, warmth, and avoid crisis situations. The only way of producing energy, electric energy, where Russia cannot bombard it because as you know, that might lead to catastrophe, nuclear catastrophe, and that is threatening not just Ukraine, but all the other countries of Europe. Not a single country in the world has never faced such challenges. Hello and welcome to Ukraine in Flames, a special project by Ukraine Media Center and NGO Euro Atlantic Force. And I'm your host, Miroslava Yarenki. Since mid-May, Ukraine has returned to blackout schedules for both domestic consumers and businesses. Russia resumed large-scale shelling of the energy industry, destroying 9 gigawatt of Ukrainian generation over the past four months. In the winter of 2022-2023, Russian attacks were mostly aimed at damaging the transportation infrastructure, specifically the main high-voltage networks. This year, the enemy army has somewhat changed its tactics. Characteristic feature of the spring campaign for the destruction of the Ukrainian energy industry was the targeted attacks on generating facilities, mostly thermal and hydroelectric power plants. The duration of power supply restriction for consumers in winter will depend on how quickly it will be possible to restore the destroyed generation before the onset of the cold season. In today's episode, we will discuss ensuring Ukraine's energy security during wartime, as well as the plans and priorities for restoring and developing generating capacities. If you want to learn more about the subject, please continue watching this video and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our videos in the future. During the first power outages in 2022-2023, Ukrainians often relied on point solutions such as power banks and charging stations. However, given the scale of the destroyed generation, the blackouts will last more than one year, so this is not enough. Over time, more systemic solutions are appearing at the level of cities and individual buildings or apartments. Currently, this is not just a way to survive the winter, but a necessity for normal existence in the upcoming years. Lana Zerkal, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine from 2014 to 2019 and Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of Ukraine, will discuss the quick and rapid energy solutions needed to survive the upcoming autumn and winter season. So now this is my focus of attention. I think that is quite clear because we all need to survive in the conditions of this winter that is approaching us and also we need to understand how we are going to live further on and how do we plan our energy system taking into account the fact that it has lived through such big destructions as a matter of fact coal generation was destroyed it gives us a lot of opportunities but it creates a lot of problems i would like to distribute the problems for at least two stages the first stage for this winter we need a like, you know like the plaster that will allow us to survive this winter and this plaster has well it's not one gigawatt of gas generation i don't quite believe in that because i'd like to start from the plaster and this plaster is really needed it is needed in order to ensure availability of critical infrastructure, acting critical infrastructure that will allow us to get water during winter, warmth, and avoid crisis situations, because we still all remember Alchevsk. I think this is possible, however, taking into account the question, I think we need a separate appeal, at least from the government or from our donors and international organization of uh, UN agencies so that they can ensure this emergency mechanism and they can provide as much as possible generating capacities, small capacities as well as ensure their installment, renovation, and maintenance. Because indeed, a lot was brought in winter period 
2022-2023, small generating capacities, generators for hospitals, for for schools, and they remain not used because in order to do that, the project has to be made, it has to be implemented, and then we have to ensure the maintenance of those generators during their work because any machinery requires maintenance, just like generators require both maintenance and they require diesel and other fuel. In communities, they don't have resources for that. neither human capacities nor financial capacities. So if we won't mention that to donors and international organizations that are ensuring provision of such equipment, they will just supply this equipment to us and the equipment will just stand there without functioning. So in my opinion, the plaster is this. In winter, the electricity deficit will be up to 35%, resulting in Ukrainians receiving only five to six hours of electricity per day. Just let it sink in, five or six hours of electricity per day. It is very difficult to predict the winter because it is currently summer and it is unclear with what generation capacity we will enter the heating season. We know for sure that the winter peak demand is quite large. If the generation plus the import capacity remains at the same level as it is now, then the deficit will reach up to 35%. Yuri Kostenko, former Minister of Environmental Protection and Nuclear Safety of Ukraine, will share his vision of ensuring energy safety of Ukraine using small nuclear reactors. That independent Ukraine had to develop totally different energy strategy. And the fact that only in 2022, before the full-scale aggression, we just stopped joining the ex-Soviet system, now it's Russian or Belarusian, it's not telling us about the efficient strategy of Ukrainian governments and Ukrainian parliament. Now, with, from the discussion that I've heard, again, everything is about the efficiency of our central authorities to generate the adequate energy policy, which is needed for survival. The question, small nuclear reactors, well, small nuclear reactors fire prospects, because they haven't been finalized for mass use. China, by the way, has started to proving and proved finally the development to industrial use. However, as for now, as for small modular nuclear reactors, they are not massively used because they are still raw, to be honest. Second, small modular reactors still its prospect maximum of 10 years. I, I mean, at least 10 years. Today, we are talking about energy survival and the conditions of war. What kind of modular reactors? Therefore, I am focusing attention all the time that they are doing the wrong things together with the Ministry of Energy in the conditions of survival. As for Zaporizhia nuclear station, you're right. It's a colossal problem, not just Ukraine, but the whole Europe, as a matter of fact, because the station is in critical condition. And even very loyal experts of Maghetti are talking about that, and no one can prognose what might happen with the Parisian nuclear station. No one can say that. None of experts or specialists. They are for us for this. The only possible way or option how to do that is only to disseminate on all the international levels from the side of the Ministry of Energy and Narho Atom information about sanctions for the Russian nuclear plants and cost pressure uh, via uh, IAEA and other international organizations for Russians to free the the Parisian nuclear power plant. And the last one is the world shows the only way of producing energy, electric energy, where Russia cannot bombard it because 
as you know, that might lead to catastrophe, nuclear catastrophe, and that is threatening not just Ukraine, but all the other countries of Europe. So in this sense, the prospects of nuclear energy for Ukraine is huge. I don't mind this prospects, but I'm just saying that today we are talking about urgent measures aiming at survival, energy survival of Ukraine. Today, not in 10 years. The world has accumulated vast experience in the development of various types of distributed generation based on natural gas, solar energy, wind, biomass, and biogas. Before the full-scale invasion, small and large-scale solar and wind generation were rapidly developing in Ukraine. Recently, against the backdrop of Russian attacks on the power system, the government and parliament have started discussing the creation of alternative mobile generation based on gas turbine and gas piston power plants. These installations vary in size from 10 kilowatts to 500 megawatts, operate on natural gas and have high maneuverability and efficiency. Oleksandr Dombrovsky, chairman of the board of the 100 Ray Ukraine platform will elaborate more on this. In the last more than 30 years, Ukraine has gone through a totally complicated path to the reforms and looking for own infrastructure and own energy infrastructure. And being in Soviet times, the inevitable part of big energy system of the USSR, in 30 years, uh, the method of trying and making mistakes, finally we get rid of the aggressor country and thanks God, by performing huge complex of legislative, normative, technical agreements to energy system and electric and gas system of the European Union and the challenges that Ukraine is going through today when everyday energy infrastructure is physically being destroyed by rockets and drones in different regions hitting any point, any square meter of the territory of Ukraine, not a single country in the world has never faced such challenges. And in order to be honest and objective, I think we have to thank Ukrainian energy workers that in spite of anything, in spite of the weather or shellings or possible wounds, till present time, no matter how hard it is, still we have gas and electric energy with all the problems that we've got. That is the first part. Now answering the question, what do we need to do today? We need to clearly understand that there are different levels of state institutions and roles of the state that has to provide, has to authorize, has to give the tools and launch decisions that were mentioned by Ms. Lana and Yuri Ivanovich mentioned. What do I mean here? As a matter of fact, we have four main sectors that we have to ensure with energy resources. The first one are people who are living in rural area or those who are living in the cities. If you are talking about Ukrainian people who are li living in regional centers, then the topic of food maybe is relevant for them because this is also energy resource no matter how banal it looks like, and they have to have the opportunity to get it, and have the opportunity to get also cheap heat. And as a matter of fact, in three months, we have the heating season, and a big concentration has to be at places where there are local authorities, regional authorities, and we need to understand clearly what kind of tools can we use. You've been watching the special project by Ukraine Media Center, an Euro-Atlantic course dedicated to the Russian-Ukrainian war, Ukraine in flames. In the description under this video, you can find information on how you can help Ukraine fight Russian aggression. If you find our work useful, please like and share this video. Slava Ukraini!